right, welcome folks. Millspec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your live sit rep coming to you from Afghanimax, uh, formerly known as the great state of Texas, uh, for your Friday 9 3 2021 uh, live sit rep. So this is going to be. Um, uh, it's going to be interesting, man. We'll get on over to the boards without further ado. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notification. And um, so looking at the boards today, we've got a couple new TFRs we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to go into what is actually happening uh, relative to Wisconsin and Texas uh, as we are uh, infiltrated. And then um, we're going to take a look at Guantanamo Bay and just kind of do a little quick spin around um, what's going on uh, south of the border with uh, the bananas as well. Uh, just for the latest update as we head into the weekend. And so pat yourselves on the back. You survived another week of tyranny. And so that is a, it's going to be a heck of an accomplishment, especially as we go forward. So, um, all right. So with that said, let me jump over here to our um, radar real fast. I'll just show you what we have active uh, TFRs right now. Uh, flashbang is kind of on the move today. And so, uh, he's headed down here to, he's already there actually, uh, to, uh, Baton Rouge and, uh, checking out the, the damage from the hurricane. And then from there, he's actually headed up here to, uh, to Philly where he's going to be, uh, at home, uh, this weekend at his personal residence. Uh, so he has vacated the, uh, senior living center. And it um, looks like a pretty long day for him. So I'm going to let me reduce this real fast. Uh, these other ones are air shows. So there's some things going on, but nothing really to speak of other than those at the moment. OK, now let me back this up just a tad. We'll get over here to uh, Flashbang schedule today. So you guys can see early start 9 a.m. Uh, and then it looks like he's got the uh, looks like the um, let me see here headed out at 10 a.m. and looks like he's yeah joint base new orleans so that confirms what we're looking for on the tfrs and um and then wraps things up late actually it's a pretty pretty long schedule for him uh rolling into philly around 9 30 this evening and then on to delaware so it looks like we've got um a geriatric trifecta happening today so uh, good for him. I don't know that he'll stay awake through all of this. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get some sleep on Air Force One as we go back and probably, um, uh, you know, a couple cat naps while people are talking, you know. So, uh, but anyway, that's going to be flashbang schedule for today. And uh, again, he's wrapping up, headed into uh, his home um, this evening. It looks like pretty late. So, all right, now let's get over here to flight radar real fast and take a look at Afghanistan. Now, it is not too late there right now. You can see the sky is pretty active in the region, um, but Afghanistan is still pretty much vacant. There's not, not anybody real flying in the area, and um, that will probably continue now. Uh, Kabul was where the area was hot for a little while. Then up here in this little mountainous region is where things are kind of going hot right now. Uh, like I said, we expected that. Uh, there is some pushback. I think people are realizing that, uh, yeah, the Taliban took over. However, they don't have any money uh, <laughs> and uh, they don't have any plans, right? And so they can't really print money. They're not really spooled up to be the government, um, although they've positioned themselves to be the government. So uh, the whole country right now is in pretty much deep kimchi because uh, they don't have food. They don't have any way to get money. Um, and so they have resulted right, I mean, just by default, right into bartering. And uh, it's really a bad situation. So, um, okay, so that said, let's hop over to the news real fast. I'm just going to kind of show you what's going on. Um, the U.S. is to give each incoming Afghan evacuee up to $2,275 in aid. Uh, the money is to be used for housing, food, other necessities, and enrolling children in school. Believe me, that is probably a week uh, if I had to guess, uh, these folks are going to be well provided. I, I can bet money on that. This isn't going to be, uh, that's all they get kind of thing. And, uh, oh, by the way, good luck. Uh, they're not going to do that. So, um, and so just like, uh, the bananas that are coming in, they're getting more than that too. And anybody that's in the foster system, that's bringing kids into their house is making, uh, probably, uh, triple that every month per head. Okay. So, all right. Um, okay. Now, but let's face over here real fast to, or flash over here real fast to what's going on in the region. Uh, and you're going to see that um, they've got residents fleeing as the Taliban intensifies the battle uh, that's going on there. And so um, 
uh, it's kind of an interesting thing because you're going to see, as I was looking at some of the videos that were going on there, uh, they're, of course, in all the American equipment. Um, I heard somebody say yesterday on Newsmax that uh, the Taliban is actually more outfitted uh, than every one of the NATO nations that are um, <laughs> uh, in terms of equipment. $86 billion worth of equipment is more than any other NATO nation other than the United States. That was said yesterday on Newsmax. So just thought it was a pretty interesting data point. So, okay. Now, we're going to look closer at how many people are coming into the country, and I'm going to point out right now why we need to pay attention to this, okay? Now, if you go back and look at um, the amount of Muslims that were elected in 2019, and if you're familiar with Stealth Jihad, this is very important because what happens is they, they get numbers into a community, and then they basically, from there, they start to position themselves into political offices and positions, whether it's city, you know, city council to mayor to whatever it might be. And so, um, and so this is from 2019, and um, I will tell you, uh, as I go through this, I'm just going to show you the areas where they are starting to get a pretty good populace. Now, Arizona's on the board, Maine's on the board, Maryland, we would expect that, Massachusetts, uh, but Michigan, um, they are starting to really ramp up in Michigan. They've got actually people into the Senate, and uh, same thing with Minnesota, all right? So those states are, you know, right next to each other, as is Wisconsin. They all kind of join together up there. Um, and so New Jersey, they got a pretty good run on it there. As you can see, everything from mayor, city council, uh, a lot of stuff going on there. Um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, okay. And um, this is uh, Tennessee, Texas, starting to get on the board here in Texas. Virginia, uh, that's not a shocker. Uh, Washington, but then look at Wisconsin. Now, this is the one that's going to really, 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 really get you. Uh, because you know where they're putting people right now. And this is from 2019, so this number is probably higher uh, than what you're seeing. But uh, you can see them. They are on um, Madison City Council, Madison Common Council, Council uh, Middle Cross, Plains Board of Education of Wisconsin. And then you've got uh, others that are school board members. Now, why is that important? Because uh, what they're doing is they are pushing their agenda into the school systems. That's exactly what that is. All right. And that's who are they training? Our kids, okay? And they're teaching them how to think, all right? Now, that doesn't stop there, okay? So it goes elevated from there. So this, like I said, part of Stealth Jihad, they start at this level. And before you know it, voila, they are up in the Senate and, and uh, congressional seats, okay? And so uh, now, of course, I don't think they hold any Senate seats yet. They are... Um, they're not to that level yet, but they're making their way and they're getting there pretty quickly. But you can see uh, Minnesota, you got Omar in there uh, wearing full garb. Uh, you got Rashida here in uh, Michigan, Minnesota, uh, Indiana, and then, of course, Minnesota. So Minnesota's already starting to bubble. Now, remember, that's kind of where they originated there in Michigan. So we're kind of expecting um, those numbers to grow. And uh, they will slowly take over. And that's what they've done in England. So um, if you want to just double check on me. Go ask a Brit uh, if they're in control of their country, and they're going to tell you that they got overrun, man, and it's because of their immigration policy. Uh, yeah, they may have liked Curry at the beginning of all of this, but I can tell you that uh, uh, they'd probably give up a, a, a nice chicken tikka masala right now to get to get some of those freedoms back and get some of these people out of their country. So uh, it is completely overrun, all right? So, okay, now let's get over here to the board. We're going to look at uh, Biggs uh, Army Airfield because this is one of the locations that they are pumping people into. Um, I want to point out that um, what's happened is D.C. has become pretty much overrun. They still have a lot of people there. They're processing, but they've also moved over to Philly, and they've also moved. you got Harrisburg in here as well, um, and that is because they are moving people around in that system, trying to get them on flights because there are just so many of them, okay? Um, and I will tell you that that number of 50,000, I guarantee – that it's going to be exponentially higher than that. And we'll watch because every one of these flights about 200 per seat. And you're going to see this is going to go on for weeks and weeks. Okay. Uh, but here, this one here is actually coming from uh, Camp Douglas, which is an interesting thing because we know they're feeding people over there. That is going to be Omni Air International. It's one of your charters out there. Southwest is still floating out of, out of um, Washington. Um, Southwest is coming out of Harrisburg now. 
but th all those areas are pretty close to each other, so they're, they're starting to move people around. Um, this is a Reach aircraft coming out of D.C. Uh, that's going to hold about 3X of what uh, one of these little uh, 737s will hold. And so um, also pay, pay attention to this one. That is an Atlas Air coming out of Nuremberg, Germany, 767-300. Uh, so they're still bringing them in. Um, that one went VFR direct straight to um, Biggs from, from there. So that's an Atlas Air flight coming in with a boatload of people into Biggs. Uh, Southwest again. Um, I don't know these right here. I don't think are anything. Southwest is that's not, uh, but these Southwest flights are. So these are the ones um, that we'll have to watch. Now that one, I don't. That's coming from Madrid, Spain. So that's probably one. That's an Airbus, and that is. Don't know who Wamos Air is, but um, uh, anyway. So it looks like they're bringing them in just straight out from other countries. So uh, no customs, nothing. Just straight in from Spain to there. There you have it. All right, and then these are all the ones that are still on the board that are that are scheduled to come in. Okay, so that's uh, Southwest. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines is even getting in on the mix. And um, like I said, they're all flowing in. This is all bigs. Okay, and it looks like they're, uh, they're headed back for another round here. Um, but that's bigs, okay? Now, let's hop over here to... Um, th now, this is going to be uh, Camp Douglas, all right? Uh, these are all stacked up coming in, um, but these are that's United Airlines, Omni Air, uh, Southwest again, United, and then it looks like America. Oh no, that's sorry, I thought that was American for a minute. That was going to shock me because they aren't in on it yet, but I'm sure they won't uh, hold out for long on the money. So, uh, but that's Allegiant Air uh, on one of their Airbuses. But you can see these are all arrivals, Washington D.C. going into Wisconsin. Now, again, when I go back over here and you look at this. Uh, why is that important? Because you're starting to get enough people where they're filling in, they're, they're getting elected for local school boards. Next will be mayor. Next will be, you know, they'll just keep bumping up the food chain. Um, and before you know it, you're going to have a, a, you know, congressman representing Wisconsin. And that is not far off, folks. Okay. So um this is what's still due in so there's another five flights there plus uh what do we have here seven flights so we're sitting at 12 flights a day right now uh coming into wisconsin at uh 200 per roughly okay on average and so um just do quick maths uh <laughs> it's not good all right so that's going to be your poppies. I know there's other stuff going on. I'm 100% confident. I just have not been able to find it yet. I'm sure you guys out there that are following me that will, you'll pump me with some more stuff. I'm hearing rumors of other things, but I don't have anything confirmed yet. Um, I've, I, uh, there is a tent city at Biggs, a massive one. Um, I'll have to look closely at it and see if there's actually a mosque there. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they haven't built some type of a mosque in there right now. Um, but, um, I do know that they're, they're starting to move them up to Mexico or sorry, not Mexico, New Mexico. Okay. Uh, out there by white sands to one of the old, um, uh, artillery ranges up there that has been inactive or deactivated. Okay. And so, um, all right. So that's where we are with the poppies. Let's pump over here to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and, uh, just see what we've got on the board. Now, if you guys remember, we were talking Back in mid-May, we saw a, uh, just a m tremendous uptick. Uh, we, we saw for about a six-week period a lot of activity that was probably a year's worth of, st of stuff in six weeks. Uh, there was nothing on the, the court calendar that would justify that. Uh, so there was something going on mid-May to the end of June. I don't know what it was. Um, uh, I think based on what we were looking at and tracking the flights coming inbound, it looked to be human trafficking arrest. And those were the folks going in. I imagine right now those are all being processed. And, um, and then, then once they're done with that wave, it'll probably be the next wave of folks. Okay. And so we'll keep our eye on it again. It has pretty much just kind of tapered off. I'm not seeing anything. It's kind of going back to its old normal routine. Um, after Mr. Bigley left office and, um, and now it's starting to kind of chill a little bit. So, um, so we'll keep watching it. This is a normal flight. That's going to be your Jacksonville seven, three, seven, eight hundred. Um, that's sun country. And, uh, those, uh, those coming out of there, that's going to be your Uber for the, uh, the legal Eagles that are coming, um, from Jacksonville. All right. Normal Friday, 
what is not on the board yet, which is not normal, is our little um, white hat birds that we've been watching for a while. Uh, they aren't on there, which they usually are Tuesday, Friday, and I don't see them. So that is kind of an interesting thing that they're not. So i um, not sure why, but um, anyway, there's that, okay? Now, uh, we're going to look at some of the gray birds and their activity just so you guys kind of, you know, we keep an eye on these. These are ones that frequented uh, Guantanamo Bay for a while and uh, haven't been back in a little bit. Uh, these are going to what they call gray hats uh, or gray birds, sorry, uh, gray hat, though it's the same thing really um, in this case. Uh, but this is N173PA. For those not familiar with this aircraft, I just kind of pop it up here. It is a beautiful little Gulf Stream. Very expensive, uh, very nice. Um, I want to say at one point, the CDC probably owned this aircraft or was at least using it. Uh, because it was, uh, I've, I remember seeing this back in the Ebola one uh, time frame. So, um, but I'm not sure if it was exact, that one exactly, but um, but nonetheless, uh, these guys are really in bed with the agencies, okay? They, we use them for testing. We use them for flying uh, analysts all around the place, operators, all kinds of different stuff. And so, uh, again, that's a beautiful little Gulf Stream. Uh, and um, it's, like I said, it has been, I don't know why it's not responding to me here. Uh, but it landed um, three hours, 43 minutes ago. It was out at Terra Sierra Island, which that is one of our prison watch locations. Uh, but it headed over to Greece. Now, I will tell you that from this standpoint, uh, let me see where it was prior to that, uh, but it probably was a gas stop if I had to guess. So it came out of Knoxville, Tennessee to Terra Sierra, maybe a gas stop. That is about, you know, you start coming from here all the way out to here. That's about the halfway point. And it's a, it's a pretty common gas stop for folks. Uh, they take on fuel. There is a a uh, U.S. Air Force Base right here on that little runway. It's also a commercial location. Um, and then right here in the city, uh, or roughly right in here in that general area, about mid middle of the island, um, there is a massive high security prison in that area right there. Okay. And so uh, that's why we're watching that spot. Okay. All right. Now over to the DOJ. They were on the move a little while ago. Um, oh, it looks like they headed back out. Remember I was telling you earlier this week, they were in Amarillo that they probably dropped a team off there. Um, this would indicate that they, they indeed did uh, because they just flew back out and are picking up that team. And so they left uh, at about 840 this morning from Manassas. Uh, that's, that'd be uh, DC, the, the Brown zone. Uh, went out to Amarillo, picked however many up they were, and uh, they're bringing them back to uh, D.C. now. So, um, But that uh, what I'm finding is that little air, airplane right there is uh, it's kind of their go team. It's a DOG go, go team. They usually send them in. Uh, and usually about that time, we'll probably hear something pop in the press here in the coming days from the DOJ about Amarillo. Okay. All right. Uh, now, we've been watching the sniffer. And um, that one landed about 23 hours ago. It was uh, flew yesterday, and it's in uh, down here in P uh, Petersburg, Virginia, Camp Springs, Maryland. And that um, looked like it just uh, buzzed out and buzzed back. But uh, that, as you guys can see, is your altitude line. So every time it's deviating here like this, it is um, taking air quality samples. Okay. And so that was on Thursday. So it left there, went out to uh, Dinwiddie and then uh, back so all right that's going to be your nuke sniffer and we'll keep our eye on that especially leading up to september 11th because that'll kind of give us an indicator if, if they really think something's going on they'll have that bad dude up pretty frequently okay okay now over to the bananas and um as we look now i've been watching laughlin air force base all week and i haven't seen anything really indicating that uh, we're still pumping to the volume that we were before into uh, in terms of bananas into that location. So it looks like uh, there has been a just, you know, a huge change or shift or focus over to uh, the poppies right now, because I it just goes to show you the magnitude of people we got in. Okay. I would imagine that every hotel in the area up there in DC right now is slam packed with those folks. Um, they have to be. Uh, they got nowhere else to put them. So, um, okay. Now, uh, this was on Thursday. So this was yesterday. We had one come out of San Antonio. 
Looks to be kind of a regular deal, though. Like, they, they seem to be coming out of San Antonio to Laughlin right now. Um, but that is kind of, I mean, there's nothing else. You had something back on Tuesday here. Also came out of San Antonio. So, um, but I only see two flights where before we were seeing three a day. So, definitely slowed down. I think it's being stopped downstream. And um, it's probably because while we're processing these folks, we were probably sending a lot of them into the same areas and now we're, we're having to reroute. So um, this is going to be very interesting um, to see because uh, that <laughs> uh, for the most part, when we talk about Hispanics, they're going to be Catholic for the most part. And so uh, now you're mixing those guys uh, in the same general in, uh, region with the, um, with the, the Muslims, which are Islam. And so, uh, that is definitely two different gods. And so uh, it's going to be very interesting to see the dynamics of that. Now, of course, this feeds right into uh, the Pope's agenda of one religion. Uh, what does he call that? Chrislam or whatever it is. So uh, it's going to be real interesting to see how that plays out and if, if he starts to kind of step in on this. So, uh, But keep your eye on that one because that's for sure. That's going to be crazy. All right. Now, uh, let's look at the flights uh, as we kind of drill down into this. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, one of your Swift Airs landed 51 minutes ago, came out of Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, headed down to Guatemala, all right? And um, that looks to be Alexandria down to Guatemala, and then that was last Friday. So it looks like they're kind of doing a regular tempo down there. I'm not sure if they are taking people back, if they are, because this is the 72-hour holding facility. Um, that could indicate that these are the guys that are showing up with other than their kids. Um, and that's part of that human trafficking thing, right? So they, they bring a kid in and then they can't prove that they're there. Uh, they may send them back. Um, maybe, maybe not. I, now that is a spitball. I don't have anything to validate that, but um, uh, they could be sending the males back down there because they don't really have this. This isn't their kids and their, their women. Um, and so, uh, or the wives or whatever it may be, your family. And so that could be what we're seeing. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I will tell you, they will just go back down there and get another kid and come back. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, because there's money in that. And that's what they're doing. It. So, all right. Uh, here is another one, 629 SW. Now, um, this one's currently en route. This is coming out of Honduras to San Antonio. So that is a fresh load of bananas uh, headed inbound. And so... Uh, now, notice this thing started out here in uh, Harlington, Texas, which is right there by Brownsville on the border. Um, rolled down there to Honduras and then round robin from Honduras up to San Antonio, where they will be processed and sent outbound. All right. Um, now, uh, from there, they are probably heading into other states. Um, they could be coming in into Texas as well. You know, Talon, like I said, uh, Afghani Max, man, that's that's the new name for this state because uh, we are we are rapidly getting um, inundated with folks, and so won't take long, uh, and they will be here in force. So, uh, okay, so landed ten hours ago. It's another Swift Air Alexandria down to Puerto Rico, which is interesting. That would indicate that they're not deporting people <laughs> for the most part down because that is another U.S. place. So. Uh, that whole theory on sending people back to uh, Guatemala has probably just got shot. So it uh, looks to me like they're taking folks here and then bring them out to Puerto Rico, giving them a little tropical life there. And let's see here. Uh, landed 34 minutes ago. It's another uh, Swift Air. This one came out of Guatemala City and went to McAllen, Texas. So that is another fresh load of bananas. And let me just double check here. Yeah, that was just for today. So uh, there's that. Okay. It looks like they did it Thursday as well. So another run. So that's two days in a row um, at, you know, let me see what kind of aircraft that is. But that 737, 800, I think it's a workhorse, isn't it? So that's another 200 uh, in two days. So 400, about 400 bananas came in uh, since yesterday into McAllen, Texas. All right. And the last one we're going to look at here actually landed an hour and 37 minutes ago. Same thing. This one came out of uh, Harling, Harlingen, Texas, headed down to Honduras. And um, looks like uh, that one will probably come right back if I had to guess or go into San Antonio. So, all right, let's get over to the main map. 
We'll take a look at what's going on in the U.S. Now, this, I'm going to tell you, this is the lightest I have seen the skies on a Friday at 2 o'clock in a long time. Typically, uh, this on a Friday, all the heavies are moving supply chain-wise. Uh, that means the fact that we're not seeing a bunch of C-17s and C-130s up tells me that they are el occupado with this immigration thing, and they're probably all across the drink bringing people in, all right? So... Uh, there's, you know, you see a couple rolling back and forth. It's like this reach right here. Uh, let me back up and see where that's coming out of. Yeah, it's coming out of the Northeast headed. That's probably headed to Biggs. I had to guess, uh, this one looks to be headed, uh, coming out of the Memphis area headed, headed East. And then this one is coming out of like just down South of North Carolina there, right on the Southern border there between North Carolina, and South Carolina. So um, now these AWACs are up. They are uh, in relationship to um, it's going to be flashbang down there. Now, remember, I was telling you before, these aircraft have the capability to do the same thing as our R-135s. They can conduct surveillance. They can grab cell data. They can do a lot of stuff. Um, and so when you see them flying this little tight circle right here, these two right here, that's they're grabbing cell data. I, I'll bet money on it. All right. Long patterns like this is kind of what you expect to see maintaining, you know, uh, when they start hitting this small circle loops like that, they're, they're, they are becoming middleman on, on the tower. And so, uh, they are probably flying, I would imagine, uh, because of, um, flashbang being down here. And so they are doing their thing. And this one here was doing the same deal. You can see in that area, look at real tight, tight circles in that general area. So. There you have it, caught red-handed. Now, for those not familiar with this, let me just pop this up here. I want to show you what this bird looks like. Again, a uh, little doghouse on the side, just like you see on the R-135s. Same thing under here. You'll see a ton of antennas. These, these um, That's a tail, actually, from the plane next to it. But um, all of these little RF antennas and stuff up here on the top. Uh, that that right there is, a, is a, like a radar dish. It's just like air traffic control. But like I said, they have the ability to uh, do other things. And that's probably a side looking um, uh, radar as well. So, uh, but yeah, that plane has a lot more capabilities than what we originally thought, at least what I originally thought. So anyway, there's that little data point for you. All right. So let me back up just a tad and said, I don't think there's really anything else on there that catches my, <laughs> excuse me, catches my eye. So. All right. Well, that is going to be our sit rep for a Friday and uh, we'll be back on Monday. And uh, I'm sure that between now and Monday, there's going to be a lot more stuff that's coming out about all, um, uh, all of this um, traffic uh, into Biggs and into Wisconsin. Uh, they're going to overflow those areas pretty quickly and then they'll be moving them into other states. And so keep your eyes and ears peeled. So that's it. Listen, you guys stay frosty out there. Be safe. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.